YouTube, this is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal bringing you another video here today. Actually, a different video, Watch Collection Review, one of which I haven't done in a while. Of course, guys, uh, I invite you all to submit your watch collections to my email, watchcardinal99 at gmail.com. I would love to give you my opinions, my suggestions on your watch collection. Uh, of course, free of charge, by all means. I'm just happy to do these kind of video format videos for you guys and just provide you my thoughts and opinions on, on your watch collection. So before we begin, let's just do a quick whist watch check. What am I wearing? I'm wearing the Bruce Wayne. That's right, guys. I'm wearing the Bruce Wayne. Guys, this has not gone off my wrist since I received it and uh, still so happy and so incredibly grateful to have this as part of my collection. And of course, I have nobody else to thank but you guys, uh, my kind and uh, extremely generous supporters. So thank you again to all of you guys. So let's just jump straight into this collection review. It is for somebody, uh, for those of you who watch the Tim Wright live stream, uh, will know pretty well, I guess, is uh, Cars and Chrono. An amazing guy, super, super generous, super kind, super humble. And uh, yeah, he submitted his collection in for review. So I'm just gonna read you the email that he sent to me. So he said, Dear Marco, let me start off by saying I'm a big fan of your show. Thank you very much. I'm an avid watch enthusiast in Los Angeles whose watch journey started in high school when my father purchased a gold day date from Rolex with my first piece being a Movado from the 1980s. And for those of you watching, he actually still has that piece, which is, it just goes to show you the type of watch collector and enthusiast he really is. Most recently, I'm a serial entrepreneur focusing on healthcare technology, one which went public with the other acquired by Oracle. This has offered me the opportunity to seek out some special pieces. I did not come from money, but had the fortune to have amazing parents who invested in their children's future and inspired us to pursue our dream. Fast forward today, where I sub, uh, humbly submit a few of my favorite pieces from my collection. So this is his first box, and oh my goodness, what a box, guys. First of all, we're starting with a Patek Philippe 5270P, the salmon dial and platinum, a perpetual calendar chrono. I mean, probably if I had to pick that along with the world time, I'm probably the two icons from Patek. Uh, just an amazing watch. The Patek Philippe 5212, the weekly calendar, that's actually in steel. I don't personally love that watch, but I do respect it tremendously. I think it's a great watch. It is very nice looking. Uh, Vacheron Constantin 1921 Hysterix Excellence in Platinum. Oh my goodness, the Vacheron just recently released this and Cards and Chrono was a very lucky uh, recipient of this watch. And man, I have to tell you, that is an unbelievable watch. I am so incredibly jealous of that watch. A Vacheron Constantin Overseas Dual Time in Blue. Absolutely beautiful, not much else to say about that. An FP Journe Tourbillon Souverain, but that's a vertical tourbillon, which is the newest one. Absolutely incredible. It has the Remotoire de Galité, one of uh, probably the most hard to do complications in the watch industry along with the tourbillon. I mean, that is just an incredible piece of horology. And FP Journe, Cournemet Optimum and Black Label. That is, if I had to pick one watch from an independent, I would probably pick that or a Carrie Voodalinen. I mean, the FP Journe Black Label Cournemet Optimum is just a spectacular watch. Just an unbelievable watch. I think it is, to me, the one watch from Journe, if I could own any watch, probably the one uh, that I would get. Uh, he also owns the FP Journe Lun Havana, so the Octoloon uh, in the Havana dial. That's actually in rose gold. I think it's the only piece that he has that is actually different from a white metal. I think it, a Havana dial Journe actually belongs in rose gold. I think it does look a lot nicer, but that's just my personal opinion. Then he has an A Lange and Soon double split. I mean, what an incredible piece. A double split from Longa is just absolutely out of this world. You know I have my tiff with Longa just because of their history, but I have to give it to them. You know what I mean? I have to bow down to Longa and say that is probably one of the most phenomenal watches. And the movement architecture and finishing of that watch is second to none. I mean, it's it's competing with some of the very best independent watch brands out there in the world. So, man, that is just a ridiculous watch. Absolutely incredible. The second box is mostly his Rolex collection. He has a Rolex GMT, the 126710, so the newest uh, 126710 BLRO, which is the newest uh, model of the Pepsi on Jubilee. He has the Explorer 2, the OP39 Red Grape, the uh, Air King with the Domino's Pizza logo, the Deep Sea, the Skydweller Blue Dial, the Platinum Daytona, and the Panda Daytona. 
He says, I look forward to watching your brutally honest review. Sincerely yours, Cars and Chrono. And he, of course, he has to add, P.S. I'm big into cars, of course, as we well know. But I think the most incredible thing is kind of a follow-up email that he actually sent to me. Uh, and he said, hey, Marco, was thinking of the collection review and wanted to add six more pieces as I feel the 16 cent previously doesn't completely reflect my watch collecting philosophy. And frankly speaking, I do totally agree. I think these six pieces really do add a lot of context to your collection and add an important element of just showing what kind of collector you really are. He said, mainly missing Omega and Independence. Hope this doesn't, uh, if it's okay with you, I would like to add the additional pieces below. No worries at all. The Omega 45th Silver Snoopy. I mean, just an unbelievable watch. Probably one of the very best Speedmasters to get. The Kodoki 2, which I've ranted and raved about so long. I think it's one of the most beautifully made watches there is, especially at the price point. I think all in all, it is just a phenomenal watch. I mean, I think it really just shows the type of collector you are uh, and the amazing taste that you really do have. Next is a Hajime Chrono Chronograph 1. Again, sticking on theme with your name, obviously Cars and Chrono. That is an absolutely beautiful chronograph. Uh, Hajime Asaoka, for those of you who don't know, he's an independent watchmaker. Uh, makes very few watches in a year. I think it's only about like five or so watches. So actually very, very exclusive and hard to get models. And because they're cost prohibitive for a lot of his followers, what he did is he created kind of a sub brand, which is called Corona, uh, which allows people to enter uh, and purchase kind of his style of watches and his design at a much more kind of affordable price point. So uh, absolutely love that, that brand and love that watch in particular. He has a Grand Seiko Heritage Autumn High Beat Limited Edition, beautiful. He has the Blanc Pan 45mm Tribute to 50 Fathoms No Radium Limited Edition of 500. Absolutely gorgeous. Obviously the 50 Fathoms is the original dive watch. The original dive watch. And uh, man, the No Radiation is probably one of my favorite. 45 mils is a little bit big, so it would probably be size prohibitive for me to own. But man, that is an absolutely gorgeous watch. And last but not least, he has the Breitling Navitimer 806, the 1959 re-edition. And finally, he concludes this email saying, just in case you're considering recommendation, please note incoming pieces include the Moser Streamliner Flyback Chronograph in the funky blue dial. Just an incredible watch. Absolutely beautiful. The Paddock Philippe Reference 5980 1R. I mean, probably the king of steel. Uh, the king of steel. The king of Paddock Chronographs is the uh, Nautilus Chronograph, especially in rose gold. And last but not least, the FP Journe Black Label Resonance. And then, of course, he also mentions I'll PayPal an additional 100 for the collection review, which I did receive. So I just want to give you a shout out to Cars and Chrono. Thank you so much for the support. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, of course, I'm going to put it to good use. As I mentioned in my email to you, I'm going to take out my mom for dinner. She's going to be really happy. So thank you so, so much. I really do appreciate the kind support. Uh, first and foremost, taking a look at the overall collection, what do I think? I mean, it's one of the most incredible collections I've had the privilege of seeing uh, from a collector. But I think what stands out to me is the type of person and collector and enthusiast you really are. You know, you get a lot of people in this hobby who obviously have the, the means to purchase a lot of the great watches that you own, but don't really have the enthusiasm or really the, the the savoir of someone like yourself. And that's where I really respect you over and above uh, kind of just your collection. It's that you're not just a watch collector, you're an enthusiast. You don't discriminate about brands. You look at things with a clear-eyed view and you, you think about them in terms of their horology, in terms of their place in the world of watchmaking. And I can really, really appreciate that from someone like yourself. I think more than anything, your collection, as I mentioned to you, shows incredible taste. I think if I was in the same position as you, I probably wouldn't even be able to pick as well as you have. So, I mean, in terms of the, the collection itself, it's one of the most amazing collections I've ever had the opportunity uh, to get to know someone who owns a collection like this. And uh, the watches coming in just blow my mind. I mean, a 5980... A Moser Streamliner Flyback Chronograph, especially in the funky blue. I think that blue dial is schmicko. Absolutely unbelievable. And then the Black Label Resonance. I mean, that is the grail of grails. So for those who don't know, there's not more than two Black Label dials, as far as I know, made by FP Jordan in an, an entire calendar year. 
of a model. So there's only going to be two black label resonance in one year, two black label resonance in another year. So, I mean, we're talking about the best of the best in terms of exclusivity and rarity. So, I mean, again, I'm just going to reiterate, if I was in the same position as you, I probably wouldn't even be able to pick as well as you have. So amazing collection props to you. I have to give you your flowers. I mean, it is just one of the most beautiful collections I've ever seen. And I think what really shows that you are an enthusiast above anything else is really that that follow up email, right? With, with that, those those kind of omegas and the independence, it, it really shows that you're not somebody who just looks at hype. You look at something in terms of their place in the world of horology. And I think that is really important, especially when uh, we look at today's market. I mean, we see Panda Daytonas. I'll put a, uh, a picture up on the screen that are selling for more than FP Journe, Rose Gold, Chronomite, Souverain from the same seller. I mean, it's just a ridiculous market, right? And what we see is somebody who really looks beyond the hype and looks at watches, uh, you know, from a standpoint of how great they truly are. So I have to give you your props and your respects. And of course, now is the best part because I do get to give you my recommendation. So I am just going to look down on my notes because uh, obviously I do need them. Um, so in terms of your collection, you obviously don't need to add anything else. But I know you are getting that 36 box from Louis Vuitton. So you do uh, plan on adding more um, watches to your collection as it stands now. So these are kind of my recommendations. The first one is I noticed that your your kind of collection has two Rolex Daytonas. You have the Platinum Daytona and you have the Steel Daytona. So I think one thing that's missing is a white gold Daytona. And the one in particular that I'm thinking is a recent release from this year. It's what Tim likes to call the Space Panda or the Meteorite Dial uh, Panda in white gold. I would actually get it on the rubber strap. So you have two on bracelet and one on rubber. You are from California. So I think that would suit your lifestyle kind of perfectly. I think a, a meteorite dial white gold panda on an oyster flex strap would just be a phenomenal addition to the collection. I think that, I mean, it would just fit within your kind of mini collection of Daytonas just perfectly. You'd have a gold, a platinum and a steel. So you finish off that kind of trio. So I think just for symmetry's sake and because it is a great watch and it would be one that I think would really fit in with your collection quite well. Uh, I think you should add that meteorite dial. If you can't add it, they do make another uh, white gold one with a ceramic bezel, if I'm not mistaken. It's got like a gray dial, grayish dial. Uh, I'll put pictures up obviously on the screen. I think those would be great addition to the collection just because it would kind of cap off that sub collection of Daytonas that you have currently. The next one is kind of going to be a little bit from left field because I'm going to give you suggestions a little bit different from what I would for most because I know you are unwill you're you're willing to take a little bit of risk and look beyond the hype to to models that I feel are really great watches overall and that should be respected by the community. So the first one is going to be actually from a big name brand it's actually from Cartier. It's the Mono Poussoir as it's known. So it's a Mono Pusher chronograph um, but the most important part is actually the movement. And I think it is something that you're going to appreciate it greatly. So it does come in white gold and rose gold, if I'm not mistaken. I would get personally the white gold, again, just because it does seem like you like your white metal watches. Um, it is also a mono pusher chronograph, which is something that you don't have in the collection. Obviously, your cars and chronos, so you're mostly, I believe, a chronograph collector. So I think it would be a great addition. But the most impressive part is actually the movement from this watch. It's a collaboration between three different, uh, three of the best also independent watchmakers of this generation. One of them you know quite well, his name is F.P. Journe. Uh, and then the, the two others are uh, Denis Flagellet, who's I believe the head of watchmaking or one of the founders or an extremely important watchmaker at the very least at De Bethune. And the last one is Vianney Halter, who is also, I mean, just one of the best watchmakers, period, in terms of uh, the kind of watches he's making. He made this deep space resonance that just absolutely blew my mind. So it's a collaboration between those three watchmakers. And I think overall the shape of the watch obviously is in kind of a tonneau shaped case, which is a little bit of a point of difference from your collection. And these watches are actually getting very, very hard to get and collectible. I mean, they're going for a record price at auctions. Collectors are, are really do appreciate it for what it is because of, I mean, just the incredible movement that you get, especially given it's a collaboration from three of the best watchmakers of modern day, period, point blank, period. So 
I mean, it is a watch that I think that you should add to the collection just because of obviously the provenance of the watch itself and the people who are involved in its conception. It's also got something worth mentioning, a beautiful guilloche type dial. I think it is just smicko. It would make an, a great addition to the collection. And I think it would really fit in quite well with kind of your, your high horology pieces uh, that you have at the moment. So that's my first suggestion, uh, my second suggestion after the Space Panda. The next is kind of, I, I, th I feel like you're missing a dress watch with like a blue dial, if that makes sense, because you don't have anything that is a blue dial uh, in the high horology space apart from the Platinum Daytona from what I can see. Now, obviously you can go for the obvious choice, which is the FP Journe chronome Chronometer Blue, which is what most people kind of gravitate towards when we're talking blue dials. Uh, I would do something, or I would suggest something a little bit different, and it's a watch from De Bethune. Now, De Bethune is an amazing independent watchmaker. I think they make really great watches. Uh, their designs are a little bit eclectic. I don't love them in general, but I do like this one watch that they do make. It's actually the DB25. It's called the Starry Various. It doesn't have that kind of really weird uh, bull crown at the 12 o'clock. Uh, it doesn't have like those weird floating lugs. What it is though is a blue titanium dial. So that's a patented uh, process where they, bl they blue titanium and that ends up being the dial. And then they put gold kind of flakes on the dial itself. It's got beautiful kind of big breguet hands. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And the bullet style lugs at the end, I think are really phenomenal. I think it would fit in your collection quite well. And it would be a great point of difference from your kind of Jorns and your other independents in that it's a little bit different, but still extremely uh, incredible in terms of the high horology and, and in terms of the finishing. So I think De Bethune, the DB25, Starry Various in particular. If not, if you don't prefer that one, I think you could definitely get something from Moser with a blue dial that isn't you know crazy expensive, something like an Endeavor Center Seconds. Um, that's a great option. Obviously you are getting the Moser Streamliner Chronograph. So if you do choose to build out the kind of Moser collection within your collection, that would be a great option to go. But my, my kind of initial pick would definitely be uh, the DB25 because I think it would just be a great point of difference and another independent in your collection that is extremely well respected and I think one of the best in the world. So that's my next pick. Uh, the next is actually from another independent watchmaker is from Gronfeld. So the Gronfeld brothers have gained a lot of traction, especially recently. Um, overall, their watches nowadays have like a two year wait list. And what's great is they have kind of different watches. So there's the Principia, which is just their base automatic uh, kind of watch, their entry level watch. There's also the Remitoir. Uh, which is great because you can customize it, do bespoke dials. The dials themselves are made by uh, Kerry Budelainen, uh, who's my favorite kind of independent watchmaker. Personally, if I was you, I would just go for something simple like a three-hander Principia uh, from them. Uh, again, I'll put an image up on the screen. Just because I think it would just be a great everyday wear. I think it's really under the radar, but in terms of the horology, the finishing of the watch, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, we're talking about nowadays two year wait list for these watches. I think that collectors have started to really appreciate uh, the Gronfeld brothers. You know, they come, they're third generation watchmakers. They come from, I believe it's the Netherlands. Don't quote me on that though. Um, but yeah, they're, they're phenomenal watchmakers in their own right. And uh, they make spectacularly finished watches. So I think that would be a great addition to the collection. Now I'm going to get into kind of optional picks. So those are the picks that I think kind of stand out to me. They're the three that I would take. So uh, the Space Panda is one of them, or the White Gold Meteorite Dial uh, Daytona, especially on the Oyster Flex or the Rubber Strap. I would do the Cartier Monopoussoir, the DB25 Starry Various, and I would do kind of a Gronefeld Principia. Now we'll get into kind of the optional picks. The first one, and probably one of the most obvious ones, is uh, the Speedmaster, the Ed White, the 321. Uh, just because I feel obviously you do have a good respect for Omega, uh, you do have that Snoopy. I think that uh, the Ed White is probably the best Omega Speedmaster ever made because you get the Sapphire Display case back, you get the original 321 movement. I think the 40 mil case size is amazing, and the bracelet is the best Speedmaster bracelet they probably ever made because it's got modern build quality and modern construction, and it is that vintage style, which I think is the nicest. Uh, hands down bracelet from Omega. So I think if you could add a Speedmaster 321, again, it's optional in my opinion, because you do have an amazing uh, silver Snoopy, which I think is fantastic, but I think it would make a great addition to the collection. 
Another one I would, again, add as an optional pick is the Jorn Sauté Grave. So if you have a lot of Jorns, I think one of the best Jorns that Jorn makes is uh, the kind of extremely high beat uh, chronograph from them, which times I think up to a tenth of a second, which is, you know, just incredible. It is a beautiful looking chronograph as well. You can get it in platinum. So again, it fits that kind of white metal theme. And again, I mean, you can't go wrong getting more Jorn in the collection. He's one of the best watchmakers there is. So that is another pick that I would I would get to. And then I have one more optional pick that I think you'll really appreciate as well, in that you are somebody who does like his independence, right? And whenever you are looking at independence, you're looking at who's next, right? Who's the next Philip Dufour, F.P. Jean, or Terry Boudelin, and or Roger Smith, or you know, these kind of guys, the, the, the kind of big name guys in the industry. And to me, the, the guy that most people name as the next guy is Rishep Rishepi. So he's a watchmaker. He operates out of uh, out of Switzerland, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, mostly known for his watches from Acrivia. They have a pretty funky, eclectic design. I don't know necessarily if that's what you're into. Um, but what he does have as well is his own line under his own name, which is Rishep Rishepi. He has the Chronomet Contemporain, which is just absolutely stunning. Uh, the movement is the same movement from Acrivia, some of the best movement finishing there is. And it's just a simple, kind of under the radar watch. Uh, the one I like the best is actually a blue jean dial. Um, it's almost like a denim dial, I think. And again, that could also fit your kind of blue dial uh, dress watch in your collection. But yeah, I think that would really, really stand out in your collection because uh, Rishep Rishepi is, I think, one of the best up and coming watchmakers there is. He's been heralded by the industry as kind of the next big watchmaker just because of how young he is. I mean, he started working at Patek Philippe at 15 years old, then went to FP Journe and then uh, started his own brand. So, I mean, a phenomenal watchmaker in his own right. I think he would be a great addition to your collection because you would be getting kind of one of those early pieces. So, uh, I mean, those always end up being some of the more collectible pieces down the line. Uh, and again, it's just a phenomenal watch in and of itself. So. Those are kind of my picks. Um, again, th there's so many d different directions you can go. You know, your, your watch collection has so many incredible great watches that you have at the base level. Currently, you have so many incredible watches coming in also. Uh, but yeah, those are my picks, at least at the moment, from what I can think of off the top of my head and uh, what I can think of, you know, long term as great additions to your collection. I think those would really stand out. They would really uh, improve your collection just in terms of the uh, horology that you would be adding and the level of watchmaking. I mean, not that you need any more because you already have an amazing collection, but I think this would add great points of difference to your collection. It would also help fill some gaps, I feel, in kind of sub-collections you're starting to build up within your collection. But yeah, man, I mean, again, props to you. Props to somebody like yourself who really looks beyond the hype when it comes to watch collecting. You know, I can really respect and appreciate somebody like yourself and... Uh, Man, whew. I hope one day I can achieve a collection and a, and a level of enthusiasm that you have for your collection uh, like you do. Because, man, I appreciate guys like yourself who are obviously deeply invested in the hobby, but more importantly, have a genuine appreciation uh, for the watches and for the world of horology. Guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy my collection review. It is a bit of a longer video just because I do feel uh, Cars and Corona did deserve uh, a little bit longer uh, of a suggestion, a little bit more feedback. Again, thank you so much, Cars and Chrono, uh, for your contribution to the channel. It really does go a long way and it does help me out. So I really, really do appreciate that. Guys, I would like to, of course, invite you to like the video, to subscribe for more videos in the future. Let me know what you think down uh, about my, obviously, my suggestions in the comments below. Let him know any suggestions you would like for him to add to the collection. Guys, my name is Marco. I'm your watch cardinal, and I'll see you guys in the next one.